Victor Salazar here with TheBoxingVoice.com, live with Brian Kenny. Brian, you saw the fight like we did. What would you think of it? I thought it was magnificent. I thought it was tremendous. Uh, not just, you know, Maidana coming out right away, showing he had the power, showing he could touch him, showing he could hurt him. That was tremendous. And then Broner battling back. You know, I know a lot of the, the story will be that Broner was unmasked, that he was exposed, but uh, I'm kind of intrigued by his next fight now because he, the way he came back and boxed, uh, I thought there was a shot until he got knocked out in the eighth round that he could still pull that out on points. Do you think 147 is too big for Broner? Obviously, we saw him point Malinaji. Point Malinaji is a great chin, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem like the power was there. It didn't seem like the power was here against Maidana. I mean, do you think he's equipped for 47? Look, Mo, yeah, guys who have made that jump right from 35 to 47, Shane Mosley, for example, you know, he had success, and then he goes up to 54, and that's where he topped out. I think Broner, at his size, he's, just, he's a compact guy that you think maybe he'd be okay there, but you're probably right. Probably when, he, and he's coming in, what, at 144, 145? Four, 144, he'd, he'd be fine coming in at 140. I think that'd probably be smarter for him. That said, you know, if you're going to go fight, you know, Danny Garcia's walking around here, you're going to fight Danny Garcia, you're going to get whacked too. Isn't that a great fight to make, Adrian Broner and Danny Garcia? Yeah, when Adrian's got to come back, and, you know, I think it'd be advised, uh, well advised to come back on someone a lot lower, someone not even ranked, and come back, reestablish yourself, box good, and, um, and then go after the champ. You don't come, if he comes right after Garcia right away, I think that's a big mistake. Do you think it was a mistake to fight Marcus Maidana? No, I think it made sense. You know, obviously you can look at it now and say, well, here's a guy with too much power. He's extremely resilient. But I have to say I'm stunned by what happened the first two rounds. I didn't expect that. I expected some sort of rally late, so I was completely wrong. So I would look at it that, no, you go through Maidana, Soto Kara, so all the tough guys in the division who aren't, you know, lightning fast, like Amir Khan, you know, or obviously at the top of the food chain with Tim Bradley and uh, with Floyd Mayweather, obviously. But everybody else below that, I thought Broner would be able to beat. And I thought if Broner stays at lightweight, he beats everybody anyway. But he jumped up to the big names. It was too much. Keith Thurman won tonight. Very impressive. Yeah. But we had him over. He said he wanted Adrian Broner pay-per-view. What do you think about Keith Thurman in his next fight? Who should he come out with? I don't know. It's it's tough. Um, he should probably be smart and take his time, too. Like, if I'm Sean Porter and Keith Thurman, I'd stay away from each other. Like, why do you need the other one, you know? I mean, two killers. Eventually, when it's ripe, that's when you do it. And I don't. I think it's underripe right now. Let them just box, you know, slightly lesser guys, and then come up. I think boxing fans recognize that. When you fight someone at the top level, you can step down in your next fight and then step back up. You shouldn't go in, like, you know, tough or you know world-class tough every single fight that wears you out you know I was thrilled with what I saw with Thurman you know today the Thurman looked great I thought uh, Porter looked great last week and Devin Alexander take a step back you know fight someone a little lower and then have your super fight after that we had Danny Garcia over here he's obviously there we had Poe Malinaji the king of Brooklyn was last week mm -hmm. but Danny Garcia sells out the Barclays Center like he is from Brooklyn yeah. How about Danny Pauly, 2014? Yeah, that'd be excellent. That'd be an excellent fight. Depend if I'm Danny, I pull everyone down to 140. That's where he's the champ. I know people wanted to put Danny in against you know Floyd, Floyd Mayweather right away, and I'm thinking that's crazy. Why would you Why would you subject yourself to that? You know, why take on Floyd now when Floyd is still at, at his peak? You know, and he's he's extended his peak. So yeah, I like that fight. And now Pauly sells. You know, I could see the reaction from Pauly in this arena. People were thrilled, taking pictures of him. So uh, if his stock is up and Danny can capitalize on that, because I think. Danny would be favored. Um, Paulie spent a good part of his career at 140. I'd make him come down at 140 and fight for the junior welterweight championship. And for Paulie, it's like, wow, a chance to win the junior welterweight championship of the world? Uh, maybe you'd take that shot. In Brooklyn, too. Yeah. Finally, Showtime's year in review. You guys are making strides. You guys are getting there to be that network. Tell us what you thought of Showtime in 2013, and tell us what's expected in 2014, and are you guys going to catch HBO? Uh, you know, I don't get into could we catch. I think, you know, week to week, it depends on what matchups. They've had very good matchups. I think the depth of our cards really shows what we have. And uh, I think we had a tremendous year. You know, even the last, I, I joined up in, uh, in September of last year, so I've been here now uh, 15 months. And we've had nothing but top flight cards every time out. So hey, there's room enough for a big two. I think it's obvious there isn't a big one anymore. There's a big two. And you could easily say we're on top. Where you have it, Brian Kenny, live with TheBoxingVoice.com.